Hello, my name's Hannah Rose and I'm a historian based at the University of Edinburgh. So Mrs King has asked me to put together a short video about some of the research that I do and why it's relevant today. So I study the history of slavery in the 19th century with a special focus on African Americans who managed to escape their enslavement in the US and travel all the way over to Britain. They gave lectures across the country in large cities and small fishing villages, as well as right here in Nottingham. They wrote stories about slavery, they created paintings, they wrote their own poetry and songs, they performed in plays based on their own lives, but most importantly of all, they inspired people to become abolitionists, so people who wanted to end slavery. They were really successful here because British people didn't know what slavery was really like. And here was a chance to try and understand it from someone who had actually witnessed it. But why is this relevant to today? So one reason is because we're walking past sites on a daily basis that are rich with stories about black people. There are some people here in Britain who think that the history of people of colour in this country started with the Windrush or the Windrush generation, but that's just not true. Black people have lived here and contributed to society in various ways since before the Roman times. Another reason why it's so important to talk about this, this history right now is that people across the globe are declaring that black lives matter. And what many of us don't realise is that so many black figures have been saying our black lives matter for centuries. So did Black Lives Matter as a movement begin with the revolution in Haiti in the late 1700s, the largest and most successful slave revolt? Did it begin with other slave uprisings in the US and the Caribbean? Did it begin when thousands of enslaved people ran away or resisted their enslavers? Did it begin with men like Moses Roper, who said in the 1830s that everybody had heard the slaveholder side of the story, but what about the slaves? Did it begin with Ida B. Wells when she wanted, in her own words, to give to the world the black people's side of the story? So for years, people like Roper and Wells wanted to make sure their voices and their side of the story was heard. So this tells us that while the slogan of Black Lives Matter didn't come into existence until 2013, it's been at the heart of protest and the black freedom struggle for generations. And most importantly, that resistance and protest has always mattered. But why has the slogan been necessary throughout history? Because then, as right now, people of colour face injustice, disrespect, abuse and even death simply because they are black. We're seeing lots of protests around the world where people are demanding the right to be seen, the right to be heard and the right to life itself. And these protests are happening because of historical problems like slavery and racism. And in both the US and in the UK, police brutality against black people is higher compared to white people. Black people are more likely to be stopped and searched by police, arrested, put in prison at higher rates and are more likely to live in poverty. So it's so important to recognise the historical roots of these injustices. So when we see the protests today or the toppling of statues in places like London and Bristol, we can understand why everything is taking place. So you may have seen the statue of a man named Edward Colston, which was taken down in Bristol and then dumped into the water. I urge you to go and Google it if you haven't seen it. And many people were angry about this, thinking it was a destruction of property and really disrespectful. But who was Colston? He was a slave trader and is personally responsible for tra trafficking between 20 and 30,000 Africans in the slave trade. So we can only understand this by learning about the history of slavery and how having these statues can be really harmful, especially to people of colour, some of whom will actually have ancestors who were trafficked by men like Colston. So we've just got a couple of questions for you to go away and think about. How do we deal with things like racism in society, in the police, in politics, in film, even in our schools? What can you do to learn about the history of protest against racism? What are the similarities and differences to protests in the past and protests we see today? And finally, how do we deal with statues that celebrate people like Colston? Should we tear them down and destroy them or put them in a museum? Thank you so much for listening and I'm really looking forward to hearing your thoughts.